The following interview was conducted with Sue Nelson for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Thursday, April the 3rd, 2008 at Stewart Center B26. The interviewer was Catherine Marquis, the Oral History Librarian. Welcome. Tell us a little bit about where you were born and your parents and siblings. All, uh, before we get started, also sitting in is her daughter, Amy. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you, Catherine. Mm -hmm. um, I, my name is Susan Vaughn Nelson, and uh, I was born in the Chicago area, and I lived and grew up on a dairy farm um, about 30 miles south of the city, and I have two brothers. One is in Texas and one is in Wisconsin, and we um, have many, many memories of my aunt and uncle, and living on the farm, we had many family gatherings and they would join us and we just had many many good times of um, spending holidays with them and um, spending good family time with them. What was the name of your aunt and uncle? Okay. Um, Virginia Kelly Carnes okay. Okay. and um, William G. Carnes. Okay. What, uh, what tells us about going to school there and then high school, a little bit about that? What was the school that you went to? Was it close to where you lived? Yes, I, um, I lived living on the farm. We walked to our elementary school, which was about a mile. And I remember back in those days, we had lunch at, my, our, my mom would pick us up for lunch and bring us back home and then take us back. But we have, um, um, in fact, I'm planning my 50th eighth grade reunion this summer with all of those classmates that I went to school with. How wonderful. So that's kind of fun. We're yeah. looking forward to that. Um, my mom was Elizabeth Carnes Vaughn, and she is the brother of William G. Carnes, my Uncle Bill, and sister-in-law to my um, Aunt Virginia. Okay. So they were all, and of course my dad, um, was a banker, my mom was a housewife, and they were all very, very close, very close-knit family, and of course, um, the three of us joined in very closely with my aunt and uncle also. Okay, there's a lot of events going on. Right. right. Yeah. And then you went to, where'd you go to high school? Tell us about that. I went to um, Bremen High School, which was located in Midlothian, Illinois, and back then it was quite a small high school, but now it's metropolitan, and and quite big and um, graduated after four years um, there and really enjoyed my my time there and then um, what year did you graduate did you participate in any student activities there or I did I was very active in student council there did a lot of a lot of those kind of activities National Honor Society um, had a lot of friends there and we still have reunions there also so that's that's kind of nice. A lot of fun. Yeah. How large fun. was your graduating class? It was about 520, something like that. Good. And we have had our, every 10 years we have a reunion. Isn't so I right? still stay in touch with some of those students. That's very good. So it's fun. It is. It's Just nice to keep in fun. touch. We enjoy doing that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then what, tell us, did you go on to college and tell us a little about I, that? Okay. I went on to college and I, um, I attended Millican University in Decatur, Illinois. I did not go to Purdue like so many other people in the family, but I was an elementary education major and uh, some of the memories that I have at Millican involve my aunt. She came for my initiation um, at Alpha Chi Omega and my mother was also an Alpha Chi so she was there so that was a very special time and my aunt always encouraged me with my sorority and college activities. Okay. And I graduated um, in 1966 and became an elementary teacher and I taught in the Chicago area in Downers Grove for a year and a half before I was married. Okay. What was campus like? Did you live on campus and you live in the sorority house then? I did. I yeah. lived, it was a very small school. At that time it was about 1,200 students. It's now about 2,600. And I um, pledged Alpha Chi my freshman year, lived in the house my sophomore year. And uh, I remember when I turned 21, my Aunt Virginia came with my mom and we had a nice um, dinner party at a restaurant with many, some of my friends. So that was a very special yeah, time. That's right. 
I did teach um, after that for eight years before I had children and then I was home for 19 years and then I went back as a teacher assistant in a middle school and worked for four years and now I tutor children of all ages. Okay, what ages are all ages? What do you tutor them in? I tutor them in everything from um, math and reading to study skills and organizational skills and self-esteem. Right. Do you do it uh, at the school? I do. I do some of my teaching at a private school in Indianapolis, named Park Tutor, and then I do the rest of it at my home or in our metropolitan school system in their schools. Okay. okay. Now, did you, uh, when did you come to Indiana? You were in Illinois, and you met your husband there in, in My Indiana? husband and I grew up together in Illinois, okay. and we were in the same church together, along with my mom and dad and my aunt and uncle, and so we all knew each other for a long, long time, and we never went to the same schools, but we were always in the same church together. So we grew up, basically we grew up together, sure. knew each other since nursery school, and then we... Um, where did he go to college? Did he go? He, didn't he go went to um, he went to Illinois Wesleyan for mm -hmm. several years, and then um, went to Northwestern for a while, and then he went into the Air Force. Okay. And we married in '67, and moved to Warner Robins, Georgia, where he was in the, the service in the Air Force. Okay. He lived there for while while he was in the service, or we were both there. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then we moved to Fort Lauderdale. And he became involved in real estate, and that's where I taught school for eight years. Okay. And then you moved to Indianapolis, huh? Well, our first child was born in Fort Lauderdale, and then we moved to Fort Myers, where he became a news anchor man um, for a local station there, and that's where our daughter was born. And then um, we were there three years, and we moved to Indianapolis, and he was with the NBC affiliate station as a news anchor uh, field anchor in Indi Indianapolis, so that's why we moved there. And we've been in Indianapolis for 30 years oh, wow. and really enjoy it. And then our third child was born in Indianapolis. Very nice. So we've been there and we're established there and we really enjoy it. That's very good. Now let's talk about uh, uh, the Virginia Kelly Carnes your aunt. Wow. And I should mention that she's the one that's given the, uh, for the Archives and Special Collections, which is very nice. And right. the name will be the Virginia Kelly Carnes Archives and Special Collections Research Center. Yeah, and you'll see on, on the exhibit, we have an exhibit, so you'll... I would Sammy, love to see it. I've yes. not seen it yet, right. so I would uh, like to see that. Sammy's going to join us for lunch, and she'll okay. tell you a little bit about oh, the facility. Oh, that would be very nice. But go ahead. Well, <laughs> some of my earliest recollections of my aunt is when I was probably a toddler, and um, she and my uncle would come and visit us on the farm, and... Um, one, of some of, some, one of the first sentences that I think I ever said as a child was, Jin Jin Boom Boom stuck. And what that meant was, Ginny's car was stuck in the snow because we had a long lane and every winter we would, have, we would become sometimes snowed in with drifts that would just blow over the hill um, on our lane and my parents told me that I used to say Jin Jin Boom Boom stuck. So I sort of remember that as one of my first memories of my aunt. Um, other memories that I have of them is when they would come to visit us at Vaughn Farm, they, my aunt always would have a wicker basket in her arm and it would be loaded with wonderful snacks and treats from Beatrice Foods. My uncle was um, Chairman, President and Chairman of the Board of Beatrice Foods, Medigold Products in Chicago. And they um, always would bring goodies when they came. So as children, we always enjoyed all of the treats. candy and the, and the treats and the nuts and part of the meal. And so that, that's probably one of the earliest memories that I have. And then after we would have these wonderful family gatherings, we would sit in the living room and just sort of talk about um, family affairs and business. And, and they um, were very fortunate in their lives. They traveled the world. They, they um, entertained Beatrice Foods executives from all over this country as well as all over the world. So we always liked to sit and listen to hear about their many trips that oh, they yes. took. Oh, yes. And my aunt, I need, would like to say that she was my uncle's 
strongest supporter in his business, and um, he considered her to be his closest friend and commandant counsel. So they really were a very um, knit pair of um, husband and wife uh, couples, and and they really did radiate that to us. They did not have children of their own. Mm -hmm. So they enjoyed um, being around the antics of the three of us. They, and, they, and you as well. Yes, right. yeah. exactly, uh -huh. exactly. So uh, my Aunt Jenny always affectionately called me Susie and called me that for my entire life. So that, that's, that was very um, sweet, I think, that she did that. and. She always was an encourager for me. She, I remember her saying to me, you can do that. I have faith in you. You can do that. So I would tell her about things that would be going on at college or um, things with the sorority or something tough in my life. And she said, I know you can do that. You can do that. So well, Tell us where she was born. Is she, where, she, uh, where was she and her husband? She was born in Warsaw, Indiana. And she was the daughter of a mortician. And... Um, had a very successful business there, and she grew up there and stayed there. And my uncle was born in Chicago, and the way they met is when they were in high school, he, he would come down to Warsaw for summers with his elderly two aunts, and he would stay with them, and my mom would also be there too, of course. And during one summer, when I guess they were juniors in high school, um, he got a phone call from the mortician saying that there were flowers that he needed to pick up for somebody in the family. And so he went to pick up these flowers and met Virginia, and then they ended up um, being involved with the local church there, and they would de deliver canned goods to uh, some of the people in the community and they ended up starting to date then when they were like juniors in high school. Okay. And then when he graduated from high school in Chicago, then he went to University of Illinois and she went to Butler first and then she transferred her sophomore year to Purdue. So when they were dating, they were dating between Illinois and Purdue. Okay. Okay. So that's kind of how stay that in, stay started. in a big ten. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So they and they dated for several years, uh -huh. and then um, uh, got married. And then and my uncle was in a law firm in Chicago, and then they moved to Chicago, and they'd been there their Rest their whole lives. Sure. But one thing I want to mention that my aunt was an Alpha Chi Omega here at Purdue, right? And my mother was also an Alpha Chi here, and they, Virginia was like a senior, and my mother was a freshman. And my aunt was an upperclassman, and she was, you know, as, as a senior, pretty confident at that point. But she would whistle the grace every night at the Alpha Chi dinners, and I guess my mom giggle, was giggling about that because she was just a little freshman. But another uh, person who was very much a part of my aunt and my mom's life was Martha Jane Graham, who has been very active here at Purdue also. Mm -hmm. So they were all in school together. And your mother, my, your mother, excuse me, your mother came was a Purdue grad. Yes, yeah, okay. she she was. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So, and what transpired after that, and I think my aunt had a great influence on me because I became an Alpha Chi, my daughter became an Alpha Chi here at Purdue. My cousin became an Alpha Chi here at Purdue, and my niece became an Alpha Chi at Texas A&M. And then two other grand nephews became students here. So uh, Purdue was always a household word, and uh, my aunt and uncle loved Purdue and um, always felt very, very strongly about giving their money to Purdue and sure. giving their support to Purdue. And my aunt was um, president of the Women's Council at one point here okay. at Purdue. And she wasn't she the uh, first chairperson of the President's Council as well? President's Council, right. that's what I meant. Uh -huh. Yes, right. she was. Right, okay. Yeah, so I just remember, you know, growing up through the years of hearing about Purdue and hearing about all the things that they loved about Purdue and what they did at Purdue. Right. So, okay. So those are some of my yeah. memories. Okay, you got some, uh, share some other things that you've got some notes on? 
Uh, let's see. Um, my aunt came to Milliken with my mom and shared my 21st birthday with me. And she thought it was very important that I have my first drink. So she treated me to what she thought was my first drink. So that was fun. But we had a, we had a nice dinner and a nice weekend with her. So she was very much a part of my life. I would think and, so. Uh, really did, you know, enjoy being with her. Um, what was, when they did a lot of traveling, do you remember any specific trips that kind of stick in your mind that they really well, enjoyed? Well, they would travel quite a bit with my mom and dad also. And oh. one trip was a trip to Europe. And it was a business trip and my parents were able to go along. And it was a first class, top of the line trip. And it was wonderful for all of them. So. Most of their other trips were by themselves, and, and they did meet a lot of um, uh, Beatrice executives around the world and, and did a lot of entertaining. And my aunt did rise to the occasion and really did adapt and, and become comfortable with my uncle's schedule. Sure. So, Where else did they live in Chicago? They lived um, in Flossmoor, okay. Illinois, which is a suburb about 30 miles south of the city. And then they moved to Hinsdale, and they had a home there for many, many years. And then, because partly because of my aunt's um, passion for golf, she loved to golf. My uncle didn't like to golf as much as she did, but she loved to golf, and so they moved to Palm Desert, California, had a lovely home there, and lived on a golf course, and spent many years with a wonderful social life out there, and sure. golfing out there. And then when they got older, they um, secured a retirement home in San Diego. And they called that the Casa, and our family spent many Christmases out there visiting the two of them, and then doing some sightseeing um, in that area when, with the whole family. And I'm, I'm talking about my brother's three children and our three children, and so we were all able to spend Christmas out there together. That's very so nice. So that was very, very nice. Right. And some of my most recent fond memories of my aunt um, would be that when my dad, who's now 92, and I would spend a lot of time with my aunt after my, hus my, my uncle died, we spent a lot of time visiting her at the Casa. And we would just go out and have lovely, lovely meals with her and just lovely visits. And I was lucky enough, my dad and I were both lucky enough to be there for her 95th birthday. So there was a big celebration at her retirement home and I have some pictures that I brought. Good. And we had, we, we just had really nice times. And then unfortunately, you know, she um, became, sick and just died quickly and so that was a year and a half ago so anyway I won't be going to San Diego but I sure did do cherish the memories that I have oh, right visiting exactly. her with right. her the uh, did they have a house out there on the at the retirement community or no it was it was an apartment uh-huh well that's a little bit easier to take care of I think right and, and, and uh, they had two wonderful caregivers for 10 years who did everything for them and loved them like parents. Yeah, that's very key. Yes, yeah. it's very key. Right. right. And that Alpha Chi, do you, uh, they, do they have national meetings at all? Do you, have you ever gotten any of those? Because you've got so many members of that sorority. Actually, we had a big one in Indianapolis about eight years ago, and I was president at the time. So I had to get up and give a speech and welcome everybody. So I have not been active lately, but we do have an active alum chapter, and yeah. I probably will get back involved again. Sure. Well, that's very good. Get yeah. my daughter back involved because she lives in Indianapolis also. Well, so, Alpha Chi but I do enjoy Alpha Chi, and I do yeah. enjoy all of the wonderful um, connections that I have through my aunt and through my mom. And, all of the memories that we have together. Right, and also the ones that, at your school that you went at the college. Exactly. At, uh, right. Exactly. And so. they kind of keep in touch. They do. Right, yes. Right. Um, any, come other, we've got a few other notes that you like oh, to share I think I do, let's okay. see. Okay, go ahead. Um, my aunt was very much a lady. She was very, very um, proper in her dress and in her demeanor. She, she almost developed some regal qualities. I mean, she was, she was very, very selective in who she talked to and who she spent her time with. 
And my uncle called her Cherub. That was his pet nickname for her and really um, treated her like a queen in many, many ways. Um, they, you know, they, they were very, very close. They did everything together. Um, they bounced ideas off of each other. So they were, they were a good working a good unit, I mm -hmm. would say. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we three kids were in many ways like their children. And so they enjoyed our antics and all of the many things that we would do growing up. And we had, um, we remember Fourth of July dinners at our local country club with fireworks and always sitting with my aunt and uncle and some of their friends. And uh, we used to, at our house, my husband and my brothers used, and my cousins used to put on Christmas Eve skits and they used to dress up like Santa Claus and reindeer and took my mom's fur coat and, and put put it on as for a reindeer and <laughs> used to listen on the radio and my husband would um, click in from time to time with news bulletins that Santa was being <laughs> cited. So my aunt and uncle loved that. That, oh, was, that was fun for them. They enjoyed all of our antics. <laughs> and um, added to the holiday spirit. It did. It really did. <laughs> We had many formal dinner parties at their home, which was also very, very special. My aunt would push a button under the table and the maid would come in to to serve the meal and clear the dishes, which I, I push a button on the table and nothing happens. But it was very gracious dining, very gracious living, and we remember that. We also remember swimming in their swimming pool, um, and they had a very mean German shepherd named Baron and we would be swimming and the dog would run around the edge of the pool barking at us and trying to nip at us. So she loved that dog, but we did not think that dog was very special. But anyway. Um, the dog was watching over you. <laughs> right, well, and he would have bit us probably if we'd gotten toward the edge of the pool. So, and she never was worried about it, but we were, we were t terrified of the dog. So that was kind of a joke later that we had with my aunt and uncle. <laughs> Um, I remember my aunt loving to play golf. She just thought golf was her passion, and that's one of the reasons that they moved to California, which was unfortunate because after they moved to California, we didn't see them very often because it was very hard with young children to get out to California. Sure, right. But when they were in the Chicago area, we saw them quite a bit. Um, I remember their, their love for Purdue. I remember them talking about um, former President Stephen Baring and having a, a social a relationship with him. Um, she, you know, they just really considered Purdue to be one of their favorite charities and um, one of their favorite places to place their, their uh, money and their interests. So I feel that Purdue is lucky to have had that right. influence. Did they take any of those trips at all, the President's Council trips at all? They or? may have. Okay. I, you know, I'm afraid I don't. I was off yeah. in college and then I was married, sure. so I'm not sure exactly all the trips. They but, may have. They, but they came for a lot of the weekends, I would assume. They did. Right. I know that they, that they did that, yes. Right. So um, those are kind of the things. Um, and I'm trying to think if I've forgotten anything. Oh, I know one thing I forgot. When I got married, my aunt was very involved with planning my wedding, as well as my mom and my grandmother, so it was a very busy time. But my aunt gave me a very um, gracious bridal shower, and it was all very formal. My grandmother sat at the punch table with a hat on with a feather that came out of her head. And it was very formal, very, I remember that. And it was, a, it was a very nice shower. And then the day of my wedding, my aunt in her home gave me a bridal breakfast, which as I look back on that now, I'm not sure how we had time to do that because it was with all of the bridesmaids and many of the relatives. And the wedding was at 2.30, and this was in the morning. So I don't remember how we planned all that. But we had a very lovely... But it all came together. It, it all came together. It was very, very nice. And... Um, she did take an interest in my wedding, and she had known my husband for many, many years, and she'd known the family, his family also for many years. That's very so. nice. Yeah, yeah it, really, it really is. Did you, well, you get married, and you didn't get married in Chicago, you got married, or did in you? In Chicago. Oh, you did, oh, okay. At, at the church where we all grew up, where my aunt, where my aunt and uncle were charter members of mm -hmm. the church, as well as my mom and dad. 
Okay. So, it, you know, it's just been a family affair, really. And on Vaughn Farm, where we lived, there were, there were four separate families living in three separate houses. So it was almost like the Kennedy compound when everybody would come to visit. Okay. So those are some of the, you know, you still have the memories. You still have the farm? Do not. Okay. It has totally been um, made into an industrial flood basin, and it's all ponds and industrial parks and... So it's very sad. I don't really go back. No, oh, that's you know, a I don't change. want to remember. I mean, I want to remember it the way it was. Sure. I don't want to go see it. Yeah, right. So they're... But, but they're, very different. Right, yeah, right. exactly. Okay. But I'm very fortunate that I still have my 92-year-old dad living in Indianapolis. Good. Nearby in a retirement home. And he has been a wonderful historian with collecting pictures and memorabilia of my aunt and uncle. So I brought some of those to share good and uh, um, you know basically um, we just have I just have very good memories and I I happened to be with my aunt when she died I spoke at Purdue um, at at the um, huge breakfast that you all had and when I pres when Dr. Jiski presented uh, my aunt's gift to the university and I was so lucky to be able to speak in her behalf, and a few days after that, I went out to California with my sister-in-law from Texas and my brother from Texas, and we were able to be with my aunt, and unfortunately, as I was holding her hand when she was struggling with breathing, she died. So I was glad that I was able to be there with her after all the memories and the years we've shared together, but it was a very difficult time to be there. So. It right. was very hard. Yes. But I I just cherish really all the times that I spent with her and with my dear uncle and we have um as as children growing up and as young adults we have very very good memories. Lots of companions and lots of great memories and a lot of activities exactly. which is really nice. Exactly. Yes. yes. Okay. So it's all positive. Right. It's all good. Is there any other comments that you think you got? I'm also going to ask you if you tell us what an outstanding event in your life. <clears throat> okay. Mm -hmm. um, uh, let's see. I'm just trying to think. What I'm, have I forgotten anything, Amy? Have I thought of any? Can you think of anything else? Let's see. She, my aunt was very good about um, wanting to keep up with family. It was harder for her when she became in her 90s, but I have a cousin. My mother's first cousin lives in Chicago, and um, she called, used to call all the time and keep up with her, and then I would call quite a bit, and sometimes the grandchildren, the, the nieces and nephews and the grandnieces and nephews would call and maybe visit her if they were out there. So she always enjoyed visits from family, but right. it was so hard because they were so far away. Uh, that's right, but there was yeah. the contact kept on, except it was just not as close as it was before. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Okay. It was basically phone calls at that sure. point. Okay. Yeah. Right. So she didn't. She didn't get the email process then, right? She de definitely was not into email. <laughs> she was not technologically literate. No, and neither was my dear uncle. He would wring his hands whenever there was a. A mechanical problem or a or a plumbing problem or something but um, she was just a very very strong lady um, very very um, very very determined to support her husband and do exactly what he needed to do for business she was very opinionated and she would tell you what she thought if she didn't agree with you uh, and some of that was kind of fun because you could see the two of them bicker every once in a while when they got <laughs> older. But they had a very wonderful marriage, a very yeah. wonderful um, companionship. Yeah, that's very and it nice. was very hard on my aunt when my uncle died because she outlived him by about six years. And he, he died of diabetes and had lost both legs. And it was a very, very difficult time. And she was always there caring for him. And so after he died, she really did not want to go on living. She re but she did live six years after that, and she missed him terribly. But she made the most of it, 
as best she could because she stayed at the casa where she was and um, had participated her caregivers. did some things. You she know. had her caregivers there, and we would come and visit. And she always enjoyed our visits. So yeah. you know, it was it yeah. was just all good. I she was ninety seven when she died, and um, that's a nice long life. That's she really wonderful. had a wonderful long life. We we hope we all hope that we have that right. kind of longevity. That's right. Yes. So okay. But yeah, we were we were very we were close in our own way. You know, she was very um, aloof and very very um, strong-willed, and and of course I was probably a, just kind of a wayward kid at some point. But we we really always did get Kept along together as a family. And we did have a good relationship. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. How about uh, you? You got an outstanding event in your life you'd like to share with us that comes to mind? Wow. Um, I think my biggest outstanding events in my life is the birth of my three children. Um, they are they are all wonderful Tell kids. Tell us about the children, what, what well, they're doing. Well, let's see, I have a 32-year-old son who is a pilot for Continental Airlines. He has seen more of Europe in two years than I've seen in my whole life. <laughs> and he he's home for four days and then he flies to Europe. And he's, as we speak, he's in Oslo. And when he comes back from Oslo, he'll fly to San Francisco. So he is just really flying a lot and loves it. His wife um, is named Kelly, and she's a beautiful young woman, and she works at Tiffany's. And that's a wonderful job because she's able to get me discounts every once in a while on beautiful jewelry. So I thoroughly enjoy that. It's a nice contact. Not often, but once in a while. (laughs) And then um, my wonderful one and only daughter, is going to turn 30 this year, this month, actually. So that's a very exciting time coming up for her. We have to do something pretty big and spectacular for 30 years. Um, she's working for Make-A-Wish Foundation in Indianapolis. And, and, and a Purdue grad. She is a Purdue grad, and she's in Alpha Chi. And um, she's living about 20 minutes northwest of us. And she's been married for two years. Her husband, Brian, um, works for Yellow Book and, and knows all of Indianapolis now. And um, he is a Chicago boy, so we are thrilled that he likes Indianapolis because we're hoping that they'll stay here, sure. stay there. Did he also go to Purdue? He went to DePaul University and graduated in business, I think. Yeah. Okay. And then my youngest son, who just turned 29 um, is he is a minister and he works for an organization called Crescent Project and that is a ministry where um, they try to reach out to Muslims and to help Muslims understand Christians and Christians to understand Muslims and he is planning mission trips for them to the Mideast. He doesn't go but he plans trips for these young people to go and minister to these Muslim people. And his wife is Christy, and she is another beautiful girl. And she um, is now a mom. She has two wonderful little children who made us grandparents. And um, Jada is going to be three in July, and her name is Jada Faith Nelson. And then little Isaac was born in December, and his name is Isaac Gabriel. And they're both darling, and I don't see them enough. And um, do, do they live in Indianapolis? They All of our children live in Indianapolis. Good. That makes so it nice. It's just absolutely wonderful. And then I have a, a, a great husband who I've known forever, ever since nursery school days. And um, he has his own business in Indianapolis, and he is in... Um, uh, uh, strategic planning. He does he does planning for rural electric co-ops all around the country. And as we speak, he's traveling to Alabama to um, do a strategic planning session with a small co-op in Dothan, or Andalusia, Alabama. So he'll be gone for two days. So we live a very very active life, very busy life. By the time I see my dad and do things with him and my children and my grandchildren, and we've just bought a big house two years ago, so that 
keeps me pretty busy. I would so. say so, right. Yeah. It's a great life, though. It is. It's, 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 I'm trying to get it all balanced, but it's a wonderful life, and we have wonderful um, friends, and uh, my husband and I do country western cowboy dancing, so we perform at the Indiana State Fair and dance every couple weeks, so we do a lot of, we do a lot nice. of things. Yes. Yeah. Any c closing comments that you'd like to share with us for the researchers that you can think of? Anything special? Well, have I missed anything? Okay. Um, I've, I've enjoyed the fact that I was able to live in the same town that my aunt and uncle lived in because we were all in the Homewood Flossmoor area, which is the far south side of Chicago, and I was able to see them on a regular basis. So many times young kids don't know their aunts and uncles, and I was very fortunate that I had those years with them, and then um, I felt like as I grew up, they were always a part of my life. They were always there. And then um, when they moved to California, of course, I didn't see them as often. But I thoroughly enjoyed having the interactions with them and with their, they had a very, a very, very successful, exciting life. They didn't have children, but they sure made up for it with right. all the other things that as they As you've did. indicated, that's wonderful. Right. And they, um, they felt they felt very strongly about Purdue, and I just feel like you've been on the benefiting end of that because they they really felt that they wanted their money to go to this university, mm -hmm. and they also um, instilled a love of Purdue for all of us. Uh, even though I didn't go to Purdue, but but okay. what five other family members did, so you're an adjunct. <laughs> I am. That's very good. I am. That's a good I role am. to have. Right. I right. think so. Okay. I think so. So okay. I have wonderful memories, and uh, um, I just felt very, very honored that I could be a part of their lives. Good. Thank you very much. This concludes the end. Thank you very much, Sue. Appreciate that. Thank Amy. you. Thank you. Okay.